Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, I hope you're having an incredible day or night in Jesus. Thank you so much for being here. We're going to be looking at a comparison of the modern English version with the King James. This is a MEV parallel. I've done a review on this and done some other comparisons, a review of the MEV. I just kind of felt like just uh, go through, since it's got a parallel Bible, some of you know, major, we, all the Bible's equally inspired, but you know, more uh, recognizable passages of scripture or something. So it's small print. So I've got my handy dandy magnifier out, which just makes the camera and Sister Waldron upside down. I don't know why that is. It's even upside down when I do that. Huh. So why isn't it upside down when I look here? This is one of the mysteries of the universe. Anyhow, let's get started. Genesis 1. 1. This is MEV. I'll start with the MEV, go to the King James. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So you already see a change, because the King James translators knew that God created the heaven, singular, even though it's a plural word. Hebrew had pluralities of... Uh, like majesty and this type of thing and they had read all the extant hebraic literature and commentaries over the course of millennia and so they knew it was heaven singular unlike most modern bible versions in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth let's go to 126 see what it says that may be on the next page hopefully of both of these yes then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created, he created him. Male and female created them. He created them. Okay. And so I'm going to assume you probably know the King James in that. Let's go to 315, just for the sake of time, really. If we go over 20 minutes, our, it's, a, it's a deal, technologically. I will put enmity, this is MEV, between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He will bruise your head, and you will bruise his heel. So 315 in the King James, and I'll put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Functionally the same thing. Let's go to 22.8. A lot of... The Bibles, including I think the New King James, miss the prophetic aspect of Genesis 22 8. 22 8 says this Abraham said, My son God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Because you remember, Jesus said in John 8 that Abraham rejoiced to see my day, he saw it and was glad. This is a prophecy of Messiah. They missed it there. King James did not miss it. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb. Of course, it goes on for a burnt offering because of the context. So then both of them together, God will provide himself a lamb. That's really big. That's a huge thing. Let's go to 49.10, which is kind of a, another prophecy of Messiah. 49 and 10. Let's see where we're at here. It's 49 and 14. 49 and 10 the scepter shall not depart from judah nor a lawgiver from between his feet until shiloh comes and to him will be the obedience of the people For the scepter shall not this king james shall not depart from judah nor a lawgiver from between his feet till shiloh come and unto him shall the gathering of the people be see gathering of the people as opposed will be the obedience of the people so one appears to be a prophecy of the resurrection uh, with Messiah, he's a resurrection of life. MEV misses that. So um, let's go to 314. I don't think it's going to miss 314. But let's just check here. 314. And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, You will say this to the children of Israel I am has sent me to you. That's the MEV. That's going to be okay. God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And uh, he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. So that's good. Let's go to Deuteronomy 6 4. There's so many. I'm thinking like Leviticus 17 11, the life of the flesh and the blood, 
Numbers 24, 7, uh, Deuteronomy 18. But let's, let's at least get the Shema in. The Shema. The Shema. She had like a bug fall out of this or something. And this is MEV. Hero Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. Hero Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Which, which I won't go into all the nuances, but it is stronger in the King James. So let's go Isaiah 7 14. Prophecy of Messiah. Isaiah 7 14. I hate to skip over Psalms there, though. Isaiah 7 14. I found this a really good deal at uh, on an eBay. I think it may be out of print. Uh, okay, so this is the MEV. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. All right. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. shall call his name Emmanuel. So that's good. Um, and at the footnote, it says Hebrew young woman. Not really, because when Matthew quotes it in Matthew 1, he uses Parthenos for a virgin, like the Parthenon. And so we don't know more than inspired word. No doubt about it. Let's go to 9 6. I think this is going to be okay. Um. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Now it's like, it's Wonderful Counselor, no comma, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace, 9-6 here. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful, comma, Counselor, that's the difference, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, Eternal Father, Everlasting not sure there's a huge amount of difference there. Let's go to Micah 5 2, another prophecy of Messiah. We're passing over prophecies of Pentecost here. Micah 5 and 2. This is laid out awesome. Let me just tell you that. It's very easy to follow along. But you, Bethlehem Ephrata, although you are small among the tribes of Judah, from you will come forth for me one who will be ruler of israel his origins are from old from ancient days now that weakens it much i'll read the king james but thou bethlehem ephrata though thou be little among the thousands of judah yet out of thee shall uh, he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in israel whose goings forth goings forth have been of old from ever lasting not ancient days because then you go to genesis 1 days just not long ago um let's see let's uh see what it says i think it's going to be fine because it's translated from the uh masoretic text let's go to john 3 i was gonna look at mark 16 that's the one i was wondering John 3 and uh, verse 5 Jesus answered truly truly I say to you that's what barely barely means unless a man is born of water and the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of God and uh, Jesus answered verily verily I say unto thee except a man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot enter in the kingdom of God both very good no commas separating water and spirit baptism and so that's how you're born again let's look at 2028 2020 just a few more here 2028 2028 thomas answered him my lord and my god be extremely similar to the king james most of you would know Let's do uh, Acts 237 to 239. Very important doctrine. When they heard this, they were stung in the heart. How about that stung? That's pretty good. And said to Peter, to the rest of the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Instead of men and brethren. Hmm. 
brothers. And then the sting of death is sin. So the stung, I'd have to really study that one. Peter said to him, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. I'd say remission is much more accurate. You know, same Greek word. They had to use multiple Greek words for the same, for different English words. And, that, and it's all about context. And thou shalt receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost is stronger one this term. Spirit of one departed. For the promises to you and to your children, to all that are far away, even as many as the Lord of God shall call. So, I've already mentioned some of the differences there. Um, Colossians 2.9. Let's do Colossians 2.9. Colossians, I appreciate you coming along this journey with us. I get asked a lot for Textus Receptus Bibles that are easier to read than the King James. So, MEV is Textus Receptus. Talking about Jesus Christ, for in him lives lives all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. For in him dwelleth, lives all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And uh, you're complete in him who's the head of all authority and power, head of all principality and power. Yeah, that's okay. Let's see how it does like on the subject of modesty. First Timothy 2. Um, First Timothy 2. Oh, I'm in Second Timothy 2. Which that's good too. There is danger in proof texting. That's why I'm an advocate of reading your Bible a lot. Um, 2.8 Therefore I desire that that the men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath or contentiousness. Conten See, doubting, that's totally different, really, isn't it? In the King James in like manner also that women clothe themselves in modest clothing with decency and self-control, not with braided hair, gold, pearls, or expensive clothing, but with good works, which is proper for women professing godliness. Okay, so let's go over here to the King James. Will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. So the doubting contentiousness, that's totally different. In like manner also that women adorn themselves, clothe themselves is pretty clear in the MEV, isn't it? In modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair. People would argue broided and braided, same thing. Or gold or pearls or costly or braided, but with becometh women professing godliness with good works. Interesting. Let's go to one more. First Peter 3. First Peter 3. Again, this is on the subject of modesty, some Pentecostal distinctives. Um, verse 3. Do not let your adorning be the outward adorning of braiding the hair, wearing gold, or putting on fine clothing, but let it be the hidden nature of the heart. That which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a gentle and quiet spirit, shouldn't the very precious in the sight of God. And then the King James, whose adorning, let it not be with outward adorning of plating the hair, which is totally different than broided hair or braided hair. Plating had gold intertwined in it or silver. There's archaeology of that. And of wearing of gold or putting on of apparel, uh, putting on fine clothing in the MEV. But let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of meek and quiet spirits in sight of God of great price. So, you know, some difference, some I would consider very few things inferior to the King James. Obviously being based on the Texas Receptus, it's probably much better than almost every other uh, modern translation out there. I'd love to compare this to the New King James sometime. But anyhow, God bless you. Thanks for being here. Fall in love with the Word. Jesus is the Word. Amen. Bye-bye.